swear to that on your father's box, would you? Oh, all right, I admit it, I admit it, admit it. I couldn't get to sleep thinking about it. I've been lying up there for hours rationalizing. Yeah, me too. You know, I can't believe that Gramps wouldn't have wanted to include that ticket in his last will and testament. Exactly, exactly. Think of the pleasure it would have given him. Th think of Jones, the bookie. Think of all the money that Dad has given to Jones over the years. Wait, if, if it hadn't been for Dad, Jones would never have had that ornamental fish pond, would he? Oh, all those holidays in Malta with that girl he calls his niece who works his adding machine for him. Oh. No. Wouldn't Dad want to see John's face as he paid out £848.42? That's an irrefutable argument, Dad, to which I can find no objections, either moral or religious. Oh, good boy. <laughs> Eat your heart out, Jones. <laughs> no, hang on a sec, Dad. Why? What is it? What? Well, I saw this film once. Horror film it was, all about ghouls. And this fellow opened up his father's grave, much as we are doing. To get out this priceless ruby ring in his case, against his better instinct mind, but driven to it by his beautiful and restless wife, as portrayed by Rhonda Fleming. Oh, yes. Mm. Beautiful and restless, was she? Yes, yeah. I know, yes. <laughs> and urged him on to open the tomb she was. And did he? Eventually, driven to the point of desperation by her taunts. Oh, I remember them too, yes. <laughs> oh, he, he, he took a shovel down into the moonlit graveyard, yes. and he opened up the coffin, and he saw his father's skull twisted into the distorted shape of torment. Oh, my God! What happened then? The man's own face froze into the same distorted shape of the corpse's skull, oh. like this. Yes. <laughs> oh, God, as bad as that was it. <laughs> Oh, yes, but that was, that was a grave in a moonlit graveyard, wasn't it, what, Dixie? I mean, this is a coffin in our front room. I mean, it's not even nailed down yet. I don't think it puts us in the ghoul league if it's not nailed down, does it? No, perhaps not. No, anyhow, that was a film, you see, boy. Just, just celluloid fantasy. Yes, I know, I know. But just in case there is any truth in the rumour, when you open the lid, keep a straight face. <laughs> God, what do you want to go and say a thing like that for? <laughs> just when I teed myself up to the moment of decision. And your ghouls are just like werewolves and vampires. They're just the product of myth and stupid superstition. Just symbols of terror that loom large in the over-imaginative minds of Central European peasants. Right? Right, Dad. Right. Well, go on, open it then. <laughs> Me? Why me? You're the one who's keyed up for the moment of decision. Yes, well, I've wound down again now. <laughs> look, I tell you what, then. Look, I know. Look, we'll settle this in the traditional Owen way. We'll toss for it. I don't happen to carry any loose change in my pyjamas. Oh, look, look, look. Here we are, then. Right, right. Now, then. Which hand's it in, then? Oh, you don't think I'm falling for that one, do you? With an ex-member of the Hlandauri Magic Circle? But well, you think I'd cheat at a time like this? You've cheated all your life. Why should tonight be any different? <laughs> I tell you what we will do. Here we are, look. Tell you what, a petal at a time and the one we left with the last petal's have it. <laughs> Dad, how could you suggest such a thing? Ravaging a wreath, whatever next. Well, what are you suggesting? What do you suggest? We toss the coffin in the air and call it rough or smooth? <laughs> oh. Anyway, it's no good. It's no good. I've had it. I, I couldn't open that coffin now if you paid me a million pounds. And that's that. No, I don't blame you, Dad. I couldn't either. My bottle's gone. I could have done. I could have opened it. If you hadn't crept downstairs filling my head with horror stories, we would have been 848 pounds richer by now. Well, I'm back off up to bed anyway. I'm sorry, Dad. No, oh, it's all right. I don't suppose it was ever meant to be, boy. Somewhere beyond the mortal comprehension, the divine judgment has been decreed. Well, R.I.P. then, Dad. Don't feel any pangs of conscience about depriving your family of a few of the little comforts that their lives of toil and sacrifice have never afforded. They say you can't take it with you. Well, he bloody has. <laughs> It went very well, though. Oh, it went very smoothly, not a hitch. And such a lovely day. I'm so glad he kept fine for him. I'll put your tea down here, Mr. Poe, OK? <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, uh, April Wach. You all right, Mr. Poe? Oh, yes, April Wach. I was merely admiring your dress. Very suitable, I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Simmons, would you like one of my drop scones? No, no. Uh, I mustn't stay too long, Mrs. Owen. Thank you. Thank you. More tea, Evan? 
Mortlick? Well, I might as well be talking to the wall. I don't know what's the matter with them. They took it very hard, Mrs. Owen. Well, yes, there's no need to be miserable, though. They've cast a gloom over the whole proceedings. Uh, could I... Could I have a word with you, Mr. Owen? What? A uh, word with you, please, somewhere uh, quiet. Oh, I suppose so, if I must, uh... oh, thank you. Yes, come in the front room, by oh. you, Jim. Nice, nice, excuse me, thank you. Yes, yes, this'll do. Fine, yes. We never use this room. Only for death or dignitaries. Or the woman from the Avon Cosmetics. <laughs> well, well, I wanted to see you alone, Mr. Owen, because, uh, well, I'm on the horns of a dilemma, as it were. Oh. Well, you better sit down, Mr. Simmons. <laughs> uh, just before your father died, he gave me this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh! We we, uh, we 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 we've been looking for that. <laughs> we've been looking for that all over the place. Oh yes, well, what a relief that is. Yes, yes, that's his dry cleaning ticket. See that? <laughs> This is no dry cleaning ticket. No, 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 of course not. No, 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 that's, that's his other ticket. That's his raffle ticket. He always had two tickets, and that must be his raffle ticket. Oh, yes, we were great staunch supporters, you see, of, of noble causes, yes. That's for, that's for pit ponies, you see. Oh. The relief of pit ponies, yes. If I could just have it now, oh. I'd relieve. I can't give it to you. That's my dilemma. I don't know what to do with it. Oh, well, that's simple, Mr. Evans. You just, you just give it to me, and I'll put it in a safe place, you see. And put it in the coronation mug on the mantelpiece next to the photograph of Barry John, and that beautiful, <laughs> that beautiful chroma lithograph of our dear Lord, whom you so closely resemble. <laughs> or we could take it down to Jones the bookie and cash it in. C cash it in? Cash it in? Jones the who? This is a <laughs> betting slip, Mr. Owen. Oh, betting slip, yes. is it? Oh, bet oh, that's a betting slip, is it? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I've often wondered what they look like, yes. yes. Come on, Mr. Owen, you know as well as I do. My problem is that your father gave this to me, and the significance of that gesture has been troubling me for the past 48 hours. Oh, well, there's no need to trouble yourself about a, about a worthless slip of paper, Mrs. Evans. 848. <laughs> Eight pounds, 42 pence worthless. Listen, I'm his son, see? I'm his son, I'm his only son. I'm his eldest and youngest son. I'm his sole, solitary son and heir. Heir, see? Heir, that's the word, heir. That is legally and morally mine, see? Uh, that, isn't not it? necessarily. No, I think he gave me this to make amends. I think he saw in it a way to spiritual fulfillment by way of our chapel restoration fund. Oh, can't. <laughs> buy off the wrath of the Lord, the cat. That's bribery, that is. You can't buy yourself a place in heaven. You have to wait your turn, like down here on the housing list. <laughs> no, no, I don't see it that way. Listen, listen, Mr. Simmons, don't, don't, don't get excited, will you? No, no, just, just sit down with it. Th I think we ought to talk about this. Listen, uh, why don't you go away now and, and come back when they've all gone? And then you could just, just relax, couldn't you? April will show you her trophies. You can have, uh, you can have tea, you can have dinner, you can have anything you like. You can have April if you like. <laughs> Hold yourself together, Mr. Owen. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean that last bit. No, I'm sorry. I didn't say that the Lord and I had come to an irrevocable decision. We didn't, no. No, no, no. I'm well aware of the implications of wills and testaments and uh, family inheritance. Oh, inheritance, yes. I like the sound of that word. You can't argue with a word like that, can oh, you? No, no, so I think we'll place the decision in the hands of providence. Oh, yes. How do you mean? <laughs> we'll cut for it. Goodbye, Mr. Phillips, Mr. Jenkins, young Barry, Mrs. Owen, April Bartley, Mr. Owen. Double or quits? <laughs> <laughs>